I've spent the last five months with the Anker Make M5C, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my experiences with the printer and also letting you know what I think is good and what's not so good about it. Check it out. What's going on, guys? I hope you're all doing well. Before we start talking about the M5C and getting into all of that good stuff, Let's first just talk a little bit about my 3D printing history and my experience with printers. So it's actually been quite a while since I've been interested in 3D printing at all and I've not really had any interest in the whole 3D space. And the reason for that was because the original printers that I tested out and used, they kind of sucked. The very first printer I had was actually a few years ago and it was one of the Vox Lab Aquilas. Straight out of the box, this printer required full assembly and I'm talking full assembly, it was all of the nuts and bolts, all of the hot end, pretty much everything. And this whole process was lengthy and the instructions were quite hard to follow, but I, I got it to work and I did get the thing built. At the time, this was very much a hobbyist project and I'm sure there was plenty of other things I could have spent 120 pounds on, but I did it, I, I set it up, I got it working and after printing or trying to print and doing all of the manual leveling and twisting all of the knobs and gears and spinny things and doing the whole paper level thing. And yeah, I lots of times I just ended up with lots of spaghetti and that was probably down to my lack of knowledge with 3D printing at the time, but also the hardware itself. When you have to manually do all of that stuff yourself, so leveling your beds, setting your speeds, setting your temperatures, it kind of takes away from the fun. Well, it does take away from the fun. You spend all of your time worrying about having to do those things. So rather than spending your time creating things and wanting to print things, you kind of just think, what's the point? Following that Voxlab printer, I did pick up a Creality printer and this one had the BL Touch, which allowed it to do some of the auto leveling stuff. So that saved me a bit of time, but this printer definitely did more dust collecting than actual printing. You'll probably agree then that my track record with printing hasn't been very good. Either there's been too much of a learning curve that I haven't stuck to or the hardware just hasn't been great and it's just led to me not wanting to print or not using the printers. So when Anchor Make reached out to me a few months ago because this video was actually supposed to be part of the Anchor Make M5C launch which was a few months ago but hey I've been away. But when they reached out I was very sceptical. I was just like 3D printers. But after having a look at a video and some of the marketing stuff for it, I was actually convinced that 3D printers have really advanced and this was going to be one of the first out of the box set up and plug and play type devices. After having a look at the M5C, I took some time to do a bit of research just to see how far 3D printers had actually come since I originally dabbled with them. And I was pleasantly surprised to find out that they have advanced a lot, like a lot. There's a whole bunch of manufacturers that now create all of these out of the box printers that are just plug and play. You've got your makers like Anchor Make, Bamboo Labs, Creality, and a whole bunch of others. And these manufacturers all create these big printers that are literally aimed at consumers. You can plug them in your home and you can be printing within a few minutes. History lesson aside then, let's have a look at the printer. The M5C is the second printer in Anker's M series of printers, with the M5C being the sibling to the very popular M5 printer. The C in the M5C stands for compact, and it doesn't stand for cheap or colour as a lot of people think. With the M5C being the slimmed down version of the M5, Anker Make have had to make some changes in order to allow the M5C to hit a lower price point, and some of the things that were removed to achieve this are the touchscreen, the camera and its AI based features and also the housing that the printer's made out of instead of it all being metal and having lots of metal parts there's now been exchange for these plastic parts but the plastic parts don't make the product look cheaper or feel cheaper. Inside the box for the M5C you'll find a very simple assembly guide, a power cable for your set location or region, a small bag of M5 screws, a little anchor make toolkit that contains all of the tools you'll need to get started with 3D printing, the main printer gantry and also the printer bed. The printer's got a very minimal setup and you can have this thing set up and running in about 10 minutes. The gantry simply snaps into the bottom of the printer and then you need to remove the bottom cover and insert eight different M5 screws. These can all be attached using the Anchor Make toolkit and the provided Allen keys. There's two motors on the bottom of the printer that will both need to be plugged in and so you simply just need to plug these cables in. Then on the top there's also a ribbon cable that needs to be plugged in. 
The final part of the assembly is the one part I forgot to mention which is included in the box and it's to attach the spool holder and this literally just clips to the top of the printer. With everything now assembled you're good to get started with the printer and you'll notice that the M5C has no touchscreen and the reason for this is because the M5C actually relies on the Anchor Make app and that app will allow you to connect directly to the printer using Bluetooth. Once you've got the Anchor Make app downloaded, the printer should instantly be recognised by the app and you can run through the setup process for the M5C. Using Wi-Fi you'll be able to send files directly from your printer or using the Anchor Make Cloud to slice files and load them directly on the printer. So you can literally pick models on your phone and print straight from your phone. I really like this whole concept of being able to print straight from your phone. Lots of people that are just average consumers and don't want to mess about, they'll be able to just use their phone, browse for a model and then just have it printed on their printer. Because there's no touchscreen on the device, you'll probably find yourself spending a lot of time in the app. And I know that when the M5C did launch, the app did receive a big update, so a lot of the visuals were changed and lots of new features were added. I can't really comment on this too much just because I never used the app before, but there has been a lot of changes. The simple interface provides you with three main tabs. The first tab is the device section and in here you can view and control any of your printed devices. The second tab is the explore section and this allows you to explore a list of curated Anchor Make models but it now also allows you to search on other model sites so things like printables and other places so you can find these models here and send those directly to your printer. The final section in the app is the me section. And in this section, you'll be able to configure your different Anchor Make account settings, view the help and warranty. And if you do have an M5, the time lapses are also in here, which I think is a bit of a strange one, but I'm never going to use it because I've got the M5C. One of the other main uses and functionalities inside of the app is the ability to configure that physical button on the printer. So with that button, it actually understands three different actions. You've got a single tap, a double tap, or a press and hold for three seconds. And there's also two different working modes. So you've got the standard idle mode where the printer's doing nothing. And this can have any of those three actions configured to perform something. So this could be to print the last job that was printed. It could be to print from a file or something else. You've got full control in the app over what this button does. And then you've also got the printing mode. So again, this will perform a different three actions to those idle modes. So you could have the standard pause and play, or you could have it just cancel a job, or again, something else. Although the button's not a direct replacement for a touch screen, it is nice that Anchor Make have actually thought about the button a little bit and given you those different working modes and different actions, because it will save you a trip into the app where you can just simply press the button to do something. Once the printer is all set up, it will first check if there's any firmware updates and then it will force you to do an auto bed level. This will do a series of calibration checks and also obviously check that the bed's level and once it's happy and those things are done, you can begin printing. My first print was of course a Benchy and I sent this to the printer using the mobile app and I also tested out the printer's fast mode so the Benchy printed in about 15 minutes which was pretty damn fast. There was no stringing or warping or any kind of defects on the Benchy. It was just a nice Benchy. It seems at the minute that all the big printer manufacturers are all aiming at getting the fastest printers and the M5C can print at a rate of up to 500 millimeters a second. Pretty much after getting that first Benchy out, I just went to town downloading all of the different models and printing all of the things. So there's been lots and lots of toys and lots more toys lots of personalized items and just pretty much all of those things that you show to people where they say wow because they're just fun to make. I've also made quite a few cool functional and mechanical parts which have been great tests for this M5C and the tolerance tests. So I've made the retractable swords where they fit inside of each other and again this printer's just handled it, there's been no problems. All of the different sword blades slide over the top of each other with the dragons and other articulated toys, no parts are fused together, they all just work. One of the prints that I had the other day was this little gift box and inside of the lid there's a whole bunch of different gears and you twist the top and the gears all move and this is a print in place model and again the M5C has just handled this, there's no tightness between the gears, there's no need for filing. Some of the other cooler prints that I've been doing recently on the printer are lithophanes and printing lithophanes recently is actually where I had one of the first failures and I'm not sure what caused it but it was like there was a couple of layers skipped and they just went out of sync a little bit but the printer printed something a bit weird and I don't know what caused it and when I've read 
done the print, it hasn't done it again, so I'm not sure what that is. With this printer, it's definitely miles ahead of what I've previously tested out. I haven't really had any big failures or lots of spaghetti. Often when there's failed prints, it's because I haven't put the right supports on or I've just tried to print something that needed to be supported and it hasn't, but that's down to me as opposed to the actual printer itself. You've heard a little bit about the printer then, you've seen what you've got in the box, you've seen some of the things that I've made. Now let's just move on to some of the things that I like and some of the things that I don't like, and then we'll wrap this up. The first thing that I really like about this printer is how compact it actually is. So the printer's overall footprint is very small. It's very easy to have it in the corner of an office somewhere, the corner of your desk, or just out on the side. The printer's print bed comes in at 220 by 220 millimeters, which is plenty big enough to print lots of different models and make your own things in that small space. It's not the biggest print bed, but it's plenty big enough, especially if you're a beginner. The second thing that I really like about the printer is probably also due to its compact design. Everything on the printer is really easy to see and access. You've got the button right at the front and changing the roll of filament is super easy. It's straight there in front of you and you're not reaching around the back or to the side. It's very accessible and extruding and retracting with this printer is also very easy. The next thing that I really like about this printer is the bed adhesion. For me so far, the bed adhesion has been great. I've not had models becoming unstuck and falling over and just becoming pools of spaghetti. Everything that I've printed that's been tall and skinny, so things like the swords and lithophanes, these have all just stuck perfectly, there's been no warping and falling over, and this is all without glue stick or any other kind of products. This is just that standard bed plate that you get with it, and the standard plate on the M5C is one of the magnetic steel textured plates, so that's also adding to it because that texture helps things stick nicely. Something else that I really like about the printer is the mobile app and also the desktop app. With those other printers that I've had, I never had that mobile app before so I've never been able to get notifications from the printer to say that a print's passed and a print's failed or just be able to check in the app to see how long's left of a print. Now these things are quite trivial and again I imagine lots of other printers do this nowadays and they all have apps and all of the different web portals and everything else but again for me I've not had this and it's nice to see it and nice to have it in the Anchor Make app. With the desktop app, this isn't something that I've really touched on in this video, but Anchor Make have a couple of different softwares which can be confusing. You've got just the standard Anchor Make app and also Anchor Make Studio. Anchor Make Studio has lots of the more advanced features that you have in lots of other slicer softwares, but Anchor Make is kind of in beta at the moment and it's a much simplified, more beginner friendly app and this will allow you to slice all of your models and do pretty much everything you need to be able to do on the desktop, like import STLs and modify and change things, but in a very simple and easy to use interface. Both of these different Anchor Make slicers are both currently in active development, but if you are new to 3D printing and you are thinking of getting started, I definitely recommend just checking out the Anchor Make one first because everything is simplified and all of the more advanced features are hidden away from you and you can view them if you want to. And when you get more advanced and you can do more things, I would recommend jumping over to the other one. And failing that, you can just jump over to any other software. Orca Slicer is a great one, and it does also have all of the Anchor Make profiles. So Orca Slicer is a good one. You just can't send files to Anchor Make yet. And I did also read that Anchor Make might be getting Clipper. So if you're a Clipper person, then that's possibly on the cards. So those are some of the things that I think are good, but what about the things that are not so good? I'm going to start with one of the issues that's just frustrated me the most with this printer, and it's the network connection. So this printer can only connect to a 2.4 GHz network, and there's no Ethernet port. A few weeks ago there was a firmware update that just totally broke the whole Wi-Fi connection. So in my Wi-Fi logs I could see that the printer was connecting and disconnecting, and it was just continuously doing this. No! God, please, no! 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 And the reason that this is so frustrating was because if you were using the desktop app, you'd see your printer and you'd go to send a file and then the G code would be sending and then it would just cut off and stop. But as it did this, it would just freeze for a little bit and it was just such a pain. If you were using the mobile app, it was totally fine because you could send straight to the printer because it uses Bluetooth, but if you're using Wi-Fi, it was just continuously connecting and disconnecting. No! 
Now, Anchor Make have released a couple of firmware updates since this one, and as of the time of recording this video, the issue does now seem to be fixed, but I'll let you know in the description if the issue is back or if it's still happening, but for now, it does seem to be fixed. As well as the Wi-Fi issue, I have run into a few bugs using the Anchor Make Studio and also the Anchor Make app, but hopefully these get ironed out over time. There's nothing that's majorly groundbreaking, there's been a few crashes with Anchor Make Studio and within the Anchor Make app, sometimes that just takes a while to just do things and again, hopefully these do get fixed. One of the ones that seems to be a bit persistent is specifically with the iOS app and it's to do with printer updates. Whenever there's an update for your printer, the app will prompt you and you can click update and the update goes through no problem. But following that update, the app will just keep prompting you that there's an update even though there's not. And if you press update, it will kind of hang and think about it for a bit and then just fail. And if you click cancel, the app will crash. So this one is definitely iOS based. And again, hopefully this one gets fixed soon. One of the most recent prints that I did was this articulated crystal dragon by Cinderwing 3D. And I printed this in the very lovely tree tone silk PLA by the guys over at Gratkit. And this came out absolutely perfect on the printer. However, when I did my usual print clean down, I noticed that there was loads of black marks and lots of black dust all on the bottom side of the printer, and I found that this was coming from the wheels. I'm not totally sure what's caused this to happen. This particular dragon print was a long print at around 10 hours, but I've done prints like that before and not had this issue, so maybe now is the time that the wheels are starting to wear down after five months. If you do happen to know what's causing this or what I can do to improve or change it, then let me know in the comments below. The final thing I want to touch on for things that I don't like with the printer is the printer's noise. With my printer, whenever I start it up, the fan on this thing just sounds awful. Like it does a bit of a shriek and after a while it just stops. After checking around and looking on the forums and stuff, I think that it could be to do with the printer heating up and that initial heat startup with the fan, it makes like a squealy noise. It kind of sounds like this. The other noise gripe that I have is to do with the printer's notification sounds. So the printer plays a little notification sound when it either completes something such as it's reached a certain temperature or a print's finished or something else, but that sound is ear piercing loud. It's really loud and in the app you can actually adjust the volume of this, there's either high or low or off, and if you set it to low it doesn't seem to change at all, it's still high, it's, <laughs> it's really loud. If you happen to watch this video Anchor Make and you take anything out of this video, then please just make that notification sound just that bit quieter because when you're doing multiple filament changes late at night, that noise wakes your partner up and you get shouted at. And there we go guys, that's been a bit of an insight into the experience that I've had with the M5C. There's been some good, there's been some bad, but all in all, if you are looking for a beginner 3D printer and you're looking for something that's in this price range, then this would be the one that I recommend. I'm by no means a printer expert and I've still got loads to learn, but this printer has definitely got me excited about 3D printing and is definitely getting me into 3D printing, so I'm definitely going to be looking for upgrades and other things in the future. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see some more 3D printing content from me, then don't forget to drop this video a like. If there's a particular printer that you think fits into the same price range and does the same job, if not better, then let me know what it is in the comments below. And if you've got any 3D printing tips or you want to talk 3D printers, then be sure to check out my Discord because we've got a new 3D printing channel in there with lots of awesome dudes in there talking all 3D printy stuff. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all those places that you can go to support me in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.